Jeremiah chapter 2, left off verse 19. Thine own wickedness, not good, shall correct thee. Thy backsliding, that's the first time that word shows up, backsliding, shall reprove thee. Know therefore and see that it is an evil thing and bitter. Not good. It's not good at all. Wickedness, backsliding, evil, bitter, that thou hast forsaken the Lord thy God. And you're going to see it worse and worse throughout Jeremiah. And today, the churches have forsaken God. They proclaim Jesus, and yet the scriptures say that Jesus Christ stands outside the church door and knocks. That's God speaking. While there's nonsense inside the church house. They have forsaken God and Jesus Christ in the Bible today for political stance. For the rights of freedom. And yet they won't use their freedom for the Bible and for God. That may fear is not in thee. That's America today. That's the world today. They today are afraid of COVID-19. And they are afraid and will rat somebody out for not walking in a public building without a mask. Or who did not get the, the shot. But there is no fear of God before their eyes. Saith the Lord God of hosts, and that, that's not Jeremiah speaking. That's not out of the woods, off-road, southern country preacher. That's God telling Jeremiah, they've forsaken me. And America is in the condition she is not only of sin, but the condition of her churches today. The families are broken because the churches are broken. We allow things of, of evolution to creep into the school, and we had such a strong word of God. We had such great and wonderful, strong churches. How come cases of the Moki Scopes trial? Lost for the Christians? How come Roe versus Wade lost? How come there's more divorces in the church houses today than there are in the world? And we preach against abortion. It is a sin. And it is a sin. And yet in the church houses, there are women going to have abortions performed. For of old time, I have broken thy yoke. In the past, future, in the past, the old days, and burst thy bands. I set you free. I gave you liberty. I gave you freedom. And you used it for self. You used it for pleasures. And you used it for everything but God. I've got rights. And the Atlantean means rights of the people. I had a pastor tell me one time that's wrong. I don't know where you're getting your misinformation from. I got liberty. And yet you're forgetting that there is the judgment of God coming one day. Thou sayest, I will not transgress. I am not doing wrong. We're not doing no wrong. We're, we're rich. We're wealthy. We're great. We're wonderful. How great we are. Israel, when every high hill 
They were out there worshiping the gods, out there worshiping nature, out there worshiping Mother Earth, out there worshiping the sun, the moon, and stars. And under every green tree, thou wanderest, playing the harlot. Isn't God quite clear? You're a paid whore. And yet you say, we won't transgress. Yet I had, past then, planted thee a noble vine. Jesus says he's the vine now. We are the branches. God has set forth a grapevine. And Isaiah told us it brought forth sour grape. Holy a right seed, proper and well. How then art thou turned into a de degenerate? That's the only time that word shows up. Isaiah said sour. Plant of a strange vine unto me. What's that strange? That strange, the stranger has always been likened to Gentiles. And what has Israel done? They've taken on the Gentile religions. What has the church has done? They've taken on the Babylonian, the mystery Babylon, the whore, the harlot, the Egyptian, Assyrian worship in God. Why else would you? Uh, many of the churches I've been in, and I've been in a lot of them, they got to bring in artificial plants. Why? Why do you got to decorate the pulpit around bushes and trees and all that to make it look like a grove? With a little idol and the greatest preacher of all. For though thou warst thee with nitre, is a very strong cleanser, nitrate, and take thee much soap. Soap and nitrate is not going to cleanse your sin. And yet that's what they're doing. What happened to the animals? What happened to the lambs? What happened to the goats? Of the law. Yet thy iniquity is marked before me. God sees it. How great we are. And God says in Revelation 3. <coughs> Give me another bark bag, will you, Gabriel? Because the church is making me sick. And the nonsense that goes on. And the nonsense is going on in Judah and Jeremiah. And they're one of the same. And America and the world. We are blaming everybody and everything for COVID-19. It's the Chinese. It, why not we just look to God and turn to God and repent of our sin? How can thou say, I am not polluted? When the church has taken on the world, we go, the church goes out, not we, the church goes out and more for their church service than the gospel. When Jesus said, go in all the world and preach the gospel, nowhere do you find Jesus or any apostle saying, come to church. You didn't find Jesus and the apostles putting, you know, $5 bills under a pew. Or the brochure. You don't see 
uh, you know, the movie night and you don't see all the nonsense of bingo. Even Acts puts the distinction between Easter and Passover, and yet the church does not. And you're polluted. Revelation chapter 3. I have not gone after Balaam. That's Baal. That's big sun god. Plural. There is Baal, sun god, Asterisk, his wife, the moon god, and they make little god babies. It's a sex worship orgy of all the little stars. And it's the worship of the moon and the sun and the stars and the horoscopes. And we are in a day and age today in America we sent up Apollo, a heathen god. We send up the dragon, Satan. And the devil and the old serpent out of space. We name our planets for all the gods. And we don't give God the credit, you're polluted. And my jury, the religions don't even worship God the Creator anymore. Whereas there was a Pope, Genesis is a myth. Does that bother you? The Pope don't read the Bible, that don't bother me. I have not gone out to Ben. See thy way in the valley. Valley is not where you want to be. We speak about when we've got trials and tribulations and troubles and, and things are going wrong. I'm down in the valley. <laughs> know what thou hast done? No, they don't know what they're doing. The church doesn't know what they're doing. The church doesn't realize she's carnal. She's puffed up. Thou art swift dromedary. That's a fast camel. You're in your sins fast. You're running for your, for your sin. Not against your sin. Travailing her way. As a wild ass. The God said that. I didn't. God looks at Israel and says, you're a wild ass. You're a very stubborn animal. You won't listen. You're hard to break. And even when we do break you, you still want to do what you want to do. And friend, that's the Baptist today. I don't care if you tell me it's a sin. I don't care if you lay it out in the line. I still want to do it. Because I like it. I like it. It's going to be the flame of Christian burning wood, hay, and stubble at the judgment seat of Christ. You're a wild ass, used to the wilderness that snuffed up the wind at her pleasure. There's your pleasure. That wild ass does what it wants, when it wants, and how it wants. That describes Judas. That describes the church age. That describes the world condition. We're going to do what we want to do. Because we're going to do it our way. We're going to go for the gusto. In her occasion, who can turn her away? Not many, not all, maybe not. Because she's stubborn. All they that seek her will not weary themselves. They're going to get to the point, you know what? You know what? I'm tired of fighting you. I'm going to move on to somebody who's going to listen. I'm going to do the right thing. You don't want to do the right thing. That's your problem. I warned you. Now we are talking to God's people, but we are talking to God's people in rebellion and out of fellowship with God and not even walking with God. And as far as the church age today, we're not talking to the children of God because if you're not a child of God, you're not saved. I think a lot of people that are allowed to see in church age are going to die and they're, they're exposing themselves to be absent from the body and present with the Lord, but they're going to find themselves buried and woke up in hell. I, 
I'm no judge of salvation. But I see what's out there. It's not the gospel. Come to church. Come to fellowship. Have a good time. Load up the buses. Load up the vans. Load up the pews. Bring in the worldly entertainment. And that's not Bible. It never was. And it never will be. In her mouth, they shall find her. Withhold thy foot from being unshod, thy throat from thirst. What thou sayest, get right, get corrected, do right. There's no hope. In the church age today, the blessed hope is Jesus Christ. No, for I have loved strangers, Gentiles. And after them will I go, Judah says. You know, that, that's the king that, that told Pilate, uh, that told Paul, that almost persuaded me to be a Christian. Oh man, what words. Nope. We're going to do wrong. We're not going to listen. We appreciate you. You're a good person. You're right, but we love our sins. We're not going to step out like Moses did. We are going to enjoy the pleasures of season, the, the pleasures of sin for the season. It's worth it to us. That's a shame. As the thief is ashamed when he's found. We made it today in the world that, you know what, in America, the thief is not ashamed. He'll get himself a lawyer. He's got rights. And if he's a person of color, he'll, he'll, he'll claim it all upon his colorness. But it should be as a thief is ashamed when he's found. Even Judas they said that he was a thief and he held the bed. Even when he come to his senses, he realized the sin that he'd done against the innocent blood of Jesus Christ. And he went and confessed to the wrong people and went and hung himself. So is the house of Israel ashamed. What is the verse for us today as Christians? For us not to be ashamed. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be shamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Uh, we don't read the Old Testament. We don't even read our Bible. We don't even bring a Bible to church no more. It's up on the screen, and who checks it makes sure if it's the proper Bible. I had in Sunday school, a guy got up, telling us about Revelation 19, and that the blood that is on the garments of Jesus is Jesus' own blood. Excuse me, sir, did you read Isaiah 63? Oh. And I said the blood is the blood of the enemy. Well, I read some commentaries that said that. You completely ignored the fact is to even think about all the blood of Jesus was spilt out on Calvary. And that he said flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. There would be no blood in Jesus. To say something as numbskull that you did. That that blood is the blood of Jesus. Jesus took his own blood you fool. And wiped it out. It sounds reasonable to me. And woe be the man that comes up with the Bible and shows what the Bible has to say. And they're kings. we got kings in Jeremiah. The final kings are coming up in Jeremiah. In the times of Jeremiah, it, it, Judah will have her last king. And she'll have no more to Jesus Christ. They're princes. They'll be carried off to Babylon. Uh, uh, Daniel was one of the princes, the nobles. And the priests, 
And I'm sorry to say it says priest. That would be the false priests and the Levitical priests. Remember at the time of Jeremiah, as we start off early, but we're in the time of Jehoiakim. He's the man who had the revival, cleaned up the temple, and they found the book of the law. He's the last good king of Judah. All the rest are sorrow. And they're prophets. In the time of Jehoiakim, you know what? They were ashamed. Oh, man, we're sinners. We sin against God. Take this book and find out. Speak to God. Have God speak to us. That will end. It will go worse and worse and worse and worse down here. The next 50 chapters. And then the next book will be Lamentations. Of God sitting God's people destroyed. And the prophets. False prophets and the prophets of God. Jeremiah is called the weeping prophet. Say to the stock, to the tree, Thou art my father. No, you're not. But the idol, what comes from the wood, what comes from the tree, tree huggers, the druids, the Christmas tree, you're our father. Father Christmas. Father Satan, who's a liar and a murderer. To the stone thou hast brought me forth. It's the mother. Say to the rock, the weather rock, the stone, the marble, the goddess, the image, the idol that God said you're not to have. You're my mother, mother church, queen of heaven, asterisk. Not the rock of Jesus Christ, the Christ that gave him the water in the wilderness. See one of the places where Jesus said, Call no man your father? Not only a man, they're calling other things father. For they have churned their backs unto me, God said, and not their face. They did about face on God. America's done that. The world has done that. The churches are doing that. But in the time of their trouble, they will say, Arise and save us. You know, as we get to, I know we just started Jeremiah, but as we come to the end of Jeremiah, as we work our way to the end of Jeremiah, you won't see them saying that. They'll turn to the Queen of Heaven. They'll tell Jeremiah, shut up. They'll put Jeremiah in prison. They'll plot against Jeremiah. They'll put him in a dungeon with mire. But they don't turn to God. This has got to be something later. This trouble's got to be Jacob's trouble. But where are thy gods that thou hast made thee? Thou hast made. They made their own gods and the Gentile gods. I want a God that's for adultery and divorce. Okay, this is my God. I want a God where I can steal from people. And I can deceive people. And I can call it a used car salesman God. I can call it the Christopher God. I can call it the political God. That's my God. I'll put him on the shelf. I want the God that is going to give in to my sins. And what I enjoy. I'm going to have a God that represents my sports team. I'm going to have a God that gives a, a, a reward to our actors and actresses and film and movies and play. We're going to have gods where, you know, little ticket stuff that gets us to go have pleasure and fun. We'll even have little gods and, and cliques in the church house. And we'll even lift up our pastor and our church to these gods that will never sit on the throne of God. Too many Christians don't even realize when we get to New Jerusalem, it's all about Jesus and not about them. Not about me. They've got songs in the song services today, contemporary music. You can write the lyrics to your girlfriend or to your boyfriend or to God if you feel like it. You could change the pronouns. And you wouldn't even know it. 
You could put that contemporary music on a regular radio station and they wouldn't even know it was it was supposed to be for God. Let them arise. Let that God arise. Jesus is going to arise one day. You understand what Stephen said to the nation of Israel? I see Jesus standing. He's willing to come and get you if you if you repent and get right. They didn't repent. They didn't get right. He sat back down. If they can save thee in the time of thy trouble. Look at trouble, trouble, trouble. According to the number of thy cities are thy gods, O Judah. America. Take a drive down your city street, your town street, and find out how many church houses are, whatever denomination, and that's Jerusalem, where we are, B.C. 629. There's a Baptist church. There's a Lutheran church. Every area's got to have a Catholic church. There's a Jehovah Witness Hall. There is the... The, the Church of the Nazarene, the, the, there is the Methodist Church, there's the Lutheran Church, there's the Greek Church, there's a church meeting in, in, the, in the, uh, 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 the Mason building, and there's a, 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 a storefront church, and there there's an occult there, and there's a cult there, and here a cult, there a cult, here a church, there a church, everywhere a church, 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 and they're not seeking God in heaven. And they're not seeking Jesus Christ, very few. We are where Jeremiah is. Jeremiah said again, for the number of the cities are thy gods. We are in America today, almost the number of the streets. Some of the streets in Daytona Beach, Florida, you'll find five or six different churches. Some of those churches are given over to political and not God. Let's put a political man in office where he'll help our people. Wherefore we plead, wherefore will you plead with me? God, that's God. That's God speaking. God's about had it. <clears throat> ye all have transgressed against me, saith the Lord. You're sinners. What are you doing to me? I'm a holy and righteous God. In vain, worthlessness, no value, zero, zero. Have I smitten your children? I gave you COVID-19 and did, did you, know, you trusted the, the pharmaceutical companies. I spread COVID-19 all over the world and you wanted the wrong Trump. I showed you my power. I put a man in the White House and you got disagreed with me. You got angry with me because you didn't get what you wanted, you sissy little wet diaper soiled rat. They stole the election. They stole it. No, God puts who he wants in office. Or the devil puts. God or the devil puts people in office they want. They receive no correction. No chastening. And God corrected them and they still. They went in the kitchen and they said, Mom told them, don't eat the cookies. They ate the cookies. Dad took them in the bedroom, spanked their little behind and told them they were thieves and they ought not to do it and to, 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 to be sorry. And when they got out of the bedroom, they went back in the kitchen and stole more cookies. And thumbed their nose at their mother. Say, I ain't listening to you. I've got rights. In the churches today, they, they, we're going to have a carnal event, and then the next time we got to have even a greater carnal event because we got to have more carnal events to overdo the carnal event that we had because we just got to feed the appetite of the flesh, and the flesh can't be happy what we what we just did. We got to do above and greater next time. That's not the Christian life. I've been six years preaching at the farmer's market here in Daytona Beach, maybe 70. I enjoy each and every Saturday. And the Saturday I can't be there because of health or because of weather, I miss it. And I don't pull up balloons and dancing clowns and hamburgers and all kinds. I preach the gospel. I don't blame anybody in the church. I preach the gospel. Your own sword has devoured your prophet. 
You have slain and killed the prophets. And they say one of them is Jeremiah. When they say in Hebrews, tradition says that the one that was slain or uh, uh, cut asunder, tradition said that that was Isaiah. Now, I don't know if that's true or not, but they had killed the prophets because Jesus said they killed the prophets. Jezebel slain the prophet like a devour, destroying lion. The lion picks off the weakest. You know, God's prophet, they're the weakest, they're the meekest. They're not going to join a political field. They're just going to do what God tells them to do and you can pick them off. Oh, generation. See ye the word of the Lord. That's going out. We're a King James Bible believing church, and I've sat under a King James Bible believing church, and right in front of the church, he's corrected the word of God right in front of their noses, right in front of their eyes, right before their ears, and no one, and no one sparked up. Over there in John. Chapter 14, and it said he goes to prepare a mansion for it. That man got up in that church, and he got up there. I don't know what he said, something, what it was, but it was not the mansion. Bye! And no one else left. No one else challenged that pastor. And we were in the church one time, and the, and the pastor said to that church, no other Bible in this, this pulpit, no, absolutely no other Bible but the King James. The pastor went away, a, a guest preacher came in, and he brought in another Bible, and Stiley Hayward got up there and challenged that man, proved to what Bible he used, and I got rebuked. Don't believe just because they say they're king. Don't believe it. Because you can be a King James Bible believer and never open or even own a King James Bible believer. Have I been a wilderness unto Israel? Have I been unfruitful? Have I been dead? Have I been without water? Have I been without? No, he's giving them manna. He's giving them water. He's giving them sheep. He's giving them oxygen. He's giving them children. He's giving them fruits. He's giving them olives. He's giving them grapes. He's giving them Levites. He's giving them the land. A land of darkness? No, 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 no. That's the devil. That's your gods. Wherefore, say my people, Israel, we are lords. Whoa. We will come no more unto thee. That's Israel saying it. God, we're the Lord. And we won't have nothing to do with you. And you'll see that later on. The queen of, with the queen of heaven. That's God speaking, telling Jeremiah to preach to the people. This is what you're saying. And there are many churches in the world today, they told God and they told you, get out of here. Take you and your traditional uh, hymns and take your, 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 your King James Bible and get the hell out of our church. We want what we want to have. How else would somebody get up and listen to a woman preacher Preach and teach them when the Bible says a woman, uh, uh, we, we don't care what that says no more. We don't care. Get out of here, God. Can a maid forget her ornaments? So that Isaiah 49, 15. Can a bride her attire? Imagine a bride. Uh, I can't. You know, here comes the bride and she's naked. She forgot her clothes. She forgot her wedding dress. That's what it's saying. She's coming down the aisle. And she's got her bra and panties. That's it. She forgot the most important thing. We're not talking about something blue, something old, something whatever. Her attire, the dress. Can she forget her dress? No. Man, she's had that thing fitted. She got the thing right. She made sure. You know the ornaments of the maid are today? They're on the tree. Called Christmas ornaments. And you got decorations in the churches. 
ornaments in the churches. There's no, there's, Paul says a, a, a woman, as long as she doesn't over lavishes herself, she could have a necklace, she can have rings, as long as she don't overindulge. Yet my people, Israel, have forgotten me days without number. I can't even count the days God saying. Why trimmest thou thy way to seek love? Therefore hast thou also taught the wicked ones thy way. Not only have you forsaken me, but you are also teaching the wicked people to become wickeder. And Jesus said about that, you know, you go across the lands, across the seas, you get one person and apostolate them. To make him a twofold child of hell worse than you. Churches are doing that today. With their books and their programs and no Bible. Also in thy skirts is bound the blood of the souls of the poor innocent. They're killing the poor. Why? Because we can do it. We want their property, we want, want their money. And you don't have to murder and go up to them and stick a knife in them. You know, you can cause that poor person to die with a heart attack. You know, how am I going to pay my bills? Oh, I, I'm, working, I'm working all the hours right now. I can't afford it. And, and you know, health. Innocent. Murder. I had not found it by secret search, but all upon all the. You know what God says? You are killing the. You're killing the poor people, innocent poor people. And I'm not looking out down, down no back alley. I'm not in the back room of a bar hall. It's out in the open. You realize in the in time of Jesus. We know he rose Lazarus out of the grave. Remember that? And we got, you know, Jesus wept. You realize they openly were going to kill Lazarus because of the testimony that Jesus done? They had sex with a woman and they wanted Jesus to stone her. Yet thou sayest, because I am innocent. That's not God saying I am. They are. I'm not guilty. Surely his anger shall turn from. God won't be angry at me because I didn't kill him. It's almost like the death was not by a sword. <laughs> Again, it may be a medical condition. Well, you know, that guy died of a heart attack. You caused it. You caused that guy to have anxiety. anxiety. Well, that guy, you know, he just had so many bills. Uh, there was a time of jubilee. There was a time of release. I think every seven years. Behold, I will plead with thee because thou sayest, I have not sinned. Oh, man. I met one guy like that in my life. And John writes to us, if a man say he's not sinned, you make God a liar. All have sinned and come short. Solomon wrote that. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. While, why gatest thou about so much to change thy way? You're going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. You're a crooked man on a crooked mile, on a crooked road. Thou also shalt be ashamed of Egypt. They're running to Egypt, not God. As I was ashamed of Syria, they ran to Assyria. Assyria took north away, Israel. Yea, thou shalt go forth from him, Egypt and Israel, uh, Egypt and Assyria, and thy hands upon thy head. Almost like you're under arrest, you're in chains, you're in bonds, or, oh my, what on earth? Uh, for the Lord has rejected thy confidences, Egypt and Assyria. And thou shalt not prosper in them. Let's go over to Revelation 3 before we close.
And I think we're going to go here quite often as we study Jeremiah. Revelation 3, verse 14. Now unto the angel of the church of the Laodicean, much rights. Right. Be saying, say if the amen, Jesus, the faithful Jesus, and the faithful witness, and the beginning of the creation of God, Jesus. I know thy works. Thou art neither cold nor hot. I word that thou wert cold or hot. Imagine Jesus saying, I wish you were cold. You want a Bible verse? You want a Bible verse for God to say, I wish you were cold? There it is. So there, because thou art lukewarm, you're walking a crooked mile and a crooked road and a crooked destination. We just read that. You're hot, you're cold. You're hot, you're cold. On Sunday, you're holy and baloney. On Monday, you're living like the devil. And Saturday night, you're in a bar room. And you may show up for midweek service. And you're telling mean and nasty jokes Tuesday. And you're cheating your boss on Friday. So that because thou art lukewarm, I, neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee, I will spit, I will vomit thee out of my mouth. That's God saying it. Give me another barf bag. Because thou sayest, the church saith, I am rich. See the I am? Didn't we just read that? That's God's I am. I am rich. You see their church buildings? You, you don't see the mortgage that they, they can't pay off. You see their big collection, their big thermometer? Look how much money I raise. And you see how little missionaries? You see how much on the, on the, on the junk and not what God wants? We're rich. See the expensive cars out in the parking lot? And increase with goods. We've got pews. We've got song books. We've got all kinds of people. We even count their head. We got we got 500 that showed up for fellowship dinner, but three that showed up for church. And, and we got fellowships after fellowship. And we invite all kinds of people in church. We got all kinds of programs. And we got, look at, look at our choir. And look at. And have need of nothing. We don't need God. And knowest not that thou art wretched, miserable, and poor. They were killing the poor. And blind and naked. That's the condition of the church. And Jesus is standing at, it says verse 20. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. He's on the outside. I hear people say all the time, Who oh, was in the days of Noah, so shall be the times. Of I read the other day, we are in the days of Noah. Uh, no, we're not. Explain yourself, Stiley. Because in the days of Noah, Jesus was in the ark. In the days of the Laodicean church, Jesus is outside. He's not inside. The devil's inside. Second uh, Corinthians 11. You got it wrong. 